Well, good evening and welcome to a special Island Stat Sports Talk. I'm your host, Earl Basin, and joining me is the Bermuda Rugby Men's National Coach and Jamie Barnwell. Jamie, the the sport of rugby is kind of been riding on a high for the last few years, um, and and just recently uh, you took part in the Rams Firemind Sevens, unfortunately finishing fourth, and then uh, just a few days ago finishing third in the uh, World Rugby Classic. But but over the over the past few years that you've actually been working with the team, how has the development of becoming a unit uh, worked out for you? Uh, with this team? It takes time to become a unit, particularly in the sport of rugby. Um, and, you know, cohesion is such a big part of doing well. So that's something that um, we've tried to bring a new way of playing into both the 15s uh, and now the 7s national team. Um, and... Yeah, everything is always, whenever we get together, it's always, all of our tournaments always uh, kind of must win, must win, must win. So we're we're trying to put together, and then there can be a big space in between. So mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is, obviously COVID hasn't helped, but we're trying to put tournaments that also give us an opportunity to build and learn from. So mm -hmm. it's not an all, all win at all cost scenario all of the time. We, we need opportunities to build, but... Um, we certainly have we have built. We've got a, a, a lot of new players that have come in in the past uh, since since COVID has stopped, or since COVID happened, should I say? Um, right. And um, we've been allowed to go back out with exemption to train, um, and so it's almost it almost feels like a new squad again in many ways, and um, <laughs> which is great. And it's but it's it's always it's always trying to look to reinvent ourselves, always looking to try and think about how we can push our game on and how we can develop. So, yeah, the, the cohesion's key, but I do feel like we're back in almost like a like a, a, a bit of a building process again at the minute. One of the biggest challenges over the years for a national team of rugby has been eligibility. Um, we know when we go to major festivals, it, it's that eligibility that, that always kind of um, hinders the makeup of the team. Um, in some regard, but but it seems to have now kind of played itself out, and we have now more, uh, you know, Bermudians playing the sport, making up the team, ensuring that the the strongest possible team could play in both sevens and fifteens. Having that availability does that also help the program and attract more people? Absolutely, we've got more Bermudian players now um, in our. 15s and in our sevens team, uh, as in as in Nav yeah, local Bermudan players that are making up the side. And I think that is probably, if I had to put my finger on it, um, that is really due down to the work of the Beyond Rugby program and the national league and the, and the high school leagues that were set up a couple of years ago. And what we're seeing from that is now we're starting to see that younger talent starting to come through, and. It's their time, you know, which is which is brilliant. And um, long may that continue because sevens in particular is a real um, it's a real game that suits local Bermudan players. It's quick, it's fast. There's lots of space. Um, it's high tempo. Lots of scores available, um, and I, that that really appeals to it. Really appeals to the younger male, but it really appeals to the to the young Bermudan. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the other thing that I noticed, because Rand is always putting on different events, and the, last year or year before last, they had a Beach Fives tournament. And I, and I asked Sean, the president of, of rugby, about possibly entering a Bermuda team, if just for experience and then down the road can get, get um, you know, more competitive. But it, looking at that, would that suit us as well? Because as you've indicated, the smaller version of the game suits us because we're 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 the way we're made up. We're we're small. We're fast. We're you know we're agile and so forth. It's just the fifteens is a big pounding game. Yeah, and it's the sevens is it's it's just so pure. There's um it, there's not too much the, the the tactical side of it is not too in depth. You know, you can come into sevens and you can be you can you can make an impact right off the bat. 
with 15s as a bit of a because there's less space but more it's a bit more technical it's a bit more tactical um it, it, it's um it requires um the expertise of the coaches really need to be around as well um it's just a lot it, for me it's it's a bigger it's a longer process to get to a, a, a top of a 15s group that're going to do it because you need props you need locks there's there's a whole series of different positional play there and, and cohesion that you need but with sevens fundamentally you need you need people that can that can read the game well speed you can't coach speed mm. um you know and it's 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 just it's much it's much more suited to I think our to our island. Um, yeah, we can definitely make an impact there, and um, and um, and we have got a realistic chance of qualifying for the Commonwealth Games in February for sure. We are not far off. Sure. Now, what what impressed you the most uh, at the Firemine Sevens about the team? Do you know what the first thing was? It was probably off the field. It was how they carried themselves. It's it's um, really impressed me how how they operated together. Um, we often talk about just being each other's just being each other's best teammates and great teammates, and 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 being classy. And what we mean by that is is you know we show our class when things get difficult, and it's and it's how we respond, and we don't respond negatively to each other. We figure out we have mistake rituals. So what happens when we make mistakes, how we respond to it, um, and we focus on the next play. Those things are key for good performance. And, and a lot of the time, we don't think they are. We, we think it's all about the skill and the fitness, which of course it is. But really good teams are able to connect those these dots as well. And I think that for me was, was one of the biggest things. Um, and, and the culture of the team, you know, how, how that how that develops. I think that was um, that's probably that for me was was the biggest thing about that impressed me about the side, other than just the playing. Mm. But the playing side, this group, uh, fairly newish group, probably made up of probably forty percent, maybe fifty percent new players or players coming into the sevens team. Um, you know, in twelve weeks' work to be right up there with Mexico, who'd been on two World Series events, um, 11 out of 14 minutes leading the game, made a bit of a mistake, gave a, put, a yellow, put a yellow card on ourselves, we're down mm -hmm. to six. That makes it very difficult to, to stay in a sevens game with two minutes, uh, three minutes to go. But putting ourselves in that area, they always say that the team, a team that does well is a team that can learn the fastest. And... Um, in 12 weeks, our team did a, did a lot of learning, that was for sure. That 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 third place game, which the, even the commentator said that that could have ended the tournament right there. That, that was over and done with. Yeah. We played with so much heart and, and determination. Um, the one thing at the end is what you were talking about earlier, is that um, how do we how do we get that much more fitter? Um, to be able to sustain because I think both teams were tired. It was just a matter of who was going to get that break. But when you're playing a short tournament, two days like that, high intense games, obviously you want to make sure that you, you are all the bases are covered. And one of our, our one of our weakest bases in Bermuda across the board is fitness. Yep. How do, how do we plan to ensure that over the next, well, following this tournament in New York and then the league starts, how do we plan to ensure that we're at our peak come qualification in Mexico? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've just actually just gone and um, made a link and invested with a uh, with actually the former Australian strength and conditioning coach who has basically, he's going to be, um, he's assisting us with some strength and conditioning type programs for exact bespoke to what we need, um, which is brilliant. So, you know, I think any great coaching team or any good sports teams look beyond just what they can offer. So for me, what I can just in, offer individually, it's always about a team of people. So trying to bring in the right team is key. Um, one of the things we identified was some of the fitness. Um, 
However, I would, you know, they in 12 weeks we we made some great strides in that. We were unfortunate we had three key injuries, which meant that some squad players had to play far more minutes in a tournament than we'd wanted them to. And then to go into double over extra time, that's, yeah. that's even pressure still. So I think that um, I think our fitness is 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 pretty good. Do I think it, it needs to go to it if we're going to be serious about qualifying for the Commonwealth Games? It needs to get to a Commonwealth Games standard uh, and that that's another step up all again and that's a big ask for for fundamentally amateur players um another thing that we we as a as a as a, as a team and and this is the same common factor i, I think across uh, lots of even um you know national teams in bermuda is 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 raising funds you know funds are the life uh, blood of our sport without funds we can't afford to go to train at the national stadium. We can't afford. Um, we can't afford to put the lights on there. Um, you know, these things are three hundred and fifty dollars for an hour. You know, this is so. Finding the funds is key. We're really fortunate that we've actually just landed as, and, and brought in as part of the team a chap called David Cotter, who used to work with the Canadian men's sevens team and was his responsibility was was fundraising. And he's already hit the ground running for us. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, so really excited about what he can help to, to bring uh, to the Sevens outfit. And also to reach out to the extended community as well, you know. Um, any help in trying to get us across the line is much appreciated. But I can tell you this team, no team will work harder than this rugby team. Um, and, and they're a realistic chance of doing something fantastic of, of going to a commonwealth games yeah. um, which would be brilliant <laughs> talk, talk a bit about mexico how many teams are, are, are in the qualifier and how many teams will actually advance yeah great question we're not too sure yet because we're not too sure of of, of, of the impact that covid will, will have there it certainly had a, a, an impact at the fireman's uh, firemines uh, sevens mm -hmm. um i guess the, the things that we're really interested in right now is the top two qualify for the Commonwealth Games. Um, Jamaica and Mexico have both played at the World, at World Series Sevens events in the past three months. Mexico are not a Commonwealth nation. So if we take the results from the fire mines, Jamaica were one. Well, two technically were Barbados beating us in, a, in that double overtime. I think when we put the ball over the line three times, all yes. Just, I, I'm, 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 still, I'm, still upset, I, I'm still upset about the, the, but, uh, the I, one. I was, <laughs> I was I, the referee took almost like four minutes to decide it's not a try. And I'm saying, how could it not be a try? And no, you know what? Okay, okay. I'm not it's, there. I can't tell. <laughs> you know, do you know what? Uh, it's, a diff, it's a difficult job on referees. But, you know, we also are responsible. We've got to make uh, clinical, we've got to make clinical decisions at, at key times for us. And that's yeah. an area of, the game that we thought that we didn't do particularly well at, um, so but I, we certainly learned from it, which is which is key, and um, I know that in those circumstances again, um, we'll be making the right decisions, you know, in in key moments, and we've also got some real exciting players to come into the side, into the squad that we didn't take to us with five out sevens just because of injuries and a few other bits and bobs, um, so you know it's it's. The squad is the push for places is is going to be really competitive. But um, yeah. Anyway, going back to the question, I think if if we take Mexico out of the equation, now we're talking well Jamaica, Barbados, ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. it's two spots really out of those three teams. Um, you've also got Trinidad and Tobago that weren't there at the five minus sevens, often put in a, a good foot forward. But um, you know, it's all it's all up for grabs. And let's be honest, it's who's going to be doing the most work over the month of December. It's all about who puts in the work then for that beginning of, of February. December is such a key month because it's Christmas, it's yeah. eating, it's, it's, it's everything you don't want to be doing. Uh, you do, you know, you don't want to, it's, it's the time we think is off. I can tell you our, our team is on. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for the boys. But remember, we said if Commonwealth standard, you got to train like Commonwealth qualifying team, and, and that means Christmas we're going to have to work. I'm afraid. <laughs> sure. Now, how much of the league structure will be helping you to to work with the players? Because obviously, um, we they start. I, I think they're starting off with a sevens tournament. Yes. Right. Yes. 
so they start off with a seven. It actually helps helps you look at other players as well, and then help build not only their confidence but their understanding of the game um, at another level. Um, the league, the sevens tournament that happens, it's not really going to help us at all. To be deadly honest, um, it's going to. The only thing that it would help us from is we'll get to see perhaps a bigger bank of players, and it'll give an opportunity to players to play. That that's about it. Mm. Um, but I, I'm we're, we're pretty certain we have the top 24 players that we could possibly find um, going away to New York. There is one or two also in there um, that may come in, kind of extended to that 26 mark. But we're pretty certain we know who who the top players are. And then the question is, you know, what what those players are prepared to do. And uh, over those Christmas months and January and Lots of things can change in that in between time, I, and I, and, and, some, and that's why squads are never the same. Things are always changing uh, for mm. whatever reason, whether that would be personal life. So it's all about who's in form, who's coming into that great, and you know, then we then we look to try and make, you know, uh, trying to make sure that the connections of players are right. You know, we've got the we've got the right combinations of players that suit each other. So. The league doesn't really add a great deal, and that, that's said with lots of respect. The league's a great thing, but it, it does get everybody back participating, which is mm. which is key, particularly in you know with, with with what we're dealing with at the moment. So, yeah, how how do you plan to ensure that the combinations you're looking for are, are divided properly for this New York trip? Because obviously, you want to see. Um, certain people with certain people you know just to get a feel for what it is or do you want to see the strongest team and then guys that are trying to make the team uh, in the other team how, how, how do you plan to, to to make sure that that's divvied out yeah do you know we've actually so if 13 players went to find my seven so technically if you mm -hmm. think about it if i've got two teams going i've got a, a core there's a core seven and then there's a there's another core six um and then we've got of course, players coming in to add to that. So fundamentally, I'm I'm not going to see. Uh, I can't see a multitude of combinations. But what I can see is I can get groups of players uh, playing within a combination set, which is really key. So I can get certain um, I can get certain players who are perhaps in the in the forwards that to always work with each other. Mm. Um, I can get certain halfbacks to always work with each other, and that's pretty key. Um, that's really key moving forwards, um, and it's and then bringing the guys from who are not always with us on island to come and then add to that mm -hmm. is is going to be excellent, and it's um, it's just going to give us a really good opportunity to to get to see everybody, and and hopefully we're we're going to play it you know at least five games, three in the in the group stage, and then hopefully we can kind of push on, and then there's two two, three games before hopefully you get to the final. We don't know what the numbers are yet, though, in terms of right, teams right. competing at New York. It's all happening quite... It's all, it will all be published to us uh, later on this week. So, But I hope there's enough teams that are there for us to be able to do that. Sure. Now, the, the, the effects of what took place last week in the Rugby Classic, how does that propel the team's confidence uh, for the next few months? Massively. I mean, um, it certainly gave me additional confidence as a coach with them. Um, the Classic was just a brilliant opportunity that came about for for us. It it actually in many it kind of it kind of it, in terms of sevens it got in the way to some extent, mm -hmm. but a tournament like that in our you know on our island that scale you can't you can't not go and get involved in that. And we were granted the opportunity through John Kane, which was fantastic. Um, when when uh, I think it was Italy that finally couldn't make it. So, you know, we, we, we stepped in and we had three training sessions. And the, 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 the stuff that the guys did with three training sessions of 15s rugby was really, really impressive, but particularly in that Canada game. And I don't think any of us will forget that first, that first three minutes when we kicked off, turned the ball over, put pressure on them, ended up scoring a cracking try in the corner. And I don't think any, 
I think it, 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 in some ways it took us by surprise, but in many ways it also, it didn't because we knew we were capable of it. But I think the reality of doing something like that versus the, perhaps the thought, because sometimes yeah. it can, can be at odds. But um, we just then grew with confidence as we went on. And um, yeah, so proud of the boys and so pleased at, at their achievements. I, I managed to see one of the three training sessions at the stadium. I think it was the Sunday before you played on the Monday. That's right. I heard you, I heard yeah. you saying this, Earl. You, yeah. You're becoming quite this, this sneaky detective. Up in the town. <laughs> but to see, to see what was worked on on the Sunday in set plays, to actually see it develop right in front of you, you sit there and you say, okay, so everybody did understand their role because I, I could hear you talking about if you do your job, this can work. You know, and, and that's, and, and I'm sitting there listening and I hear you as the play is happening. I'm saying, see that everybody understood their job, everybody. And, 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 and it must be satisfying that, that you, you work on what you consider the team's strength and they're actually able to execute it. Oh yeah. We've got we've really, got really our, players our players are intelligent. Players. They're good players. They're good players. Um, the, the, the thing for me about that tournament, we implemented a kicking game, which was, it, it was, and to be honest, the reason we did that was we took, we had, you've got to rewind actually two years before we last played. So when we played against Gibraltar, we lost in a very tent, tight game there. Mm -hmm. That was our first loss of that whole of that year, which was credit, even winning the Caribbean Championship. And mm -hmm. um, But the reason we lost was because we hadn't developed a kicking game in time for that game. Um, in in Caribbean nations, the, the rugby is fast, it's furious. We like to run from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Awesome, it's exciting, it's go go go, which is brilliant. But the higher the the higher the stakes, the more you have to start to play. Uh, you've you've got to understand what the what the territory game looks like, how yeah. you um, how you play beyond your half, um, how you exit out of your half, and how you can play all the rugby in 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 the opposition's uh, half of the field mm -hmm. and in three sessions we tried to really move a, a whole group of players who really do not work on that week in week out in Bermudan rugby at all particularly in the leagues or um and the, the transition was was remarkable absolutely and, and the execution of the kicks and how we exited in fact the only five points we gave to Canada in that first game was through our own exit uh, it was right. our exit um, right. So we've added we've added us another uh, kind of another weapon, should I say, to our arsenal, which is which is really exciting moving forward because um, yeah, we we're always. I don't think there's ever been a team I've ever been involved with where and it, we can't. There's not space to grow, and that includes my own coaching and learning, and you know, and, and if we have that understanding um, and we're happy to be sponges and not rocks, we're, we're going to do all right moving forward. Sure, sure. Well, I know um, we have this important uh, weekend coming up at the end of the month in New York, and then the work really begins uh, in preparation for um, Mexico. Um, how how soon do you have to um, you know send in a team for a tournament of that nature? Yeah, so um, I think it's just arrived on my email. Twenty uh, eighth of <laughs> November is. It's a submission of um, of are we jo are we going? And okay. The that is yes. First of December is we're on. Uh, we're back in. We're 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 hitting our strength conditioning from the first of December, and we're getting Commonwealth Games, what we call fit. So we've got to get back. Get, one of our key slogans was always about climbing the mountain. So we've got to get back up and start to climb the mountain again. It's a bit more work oh. for us. Well, we'll stay in touch definitely and be out to. Uh, talk with you and some of the players as we prepare for this this event in in February in Mexico. They all seem to take us to Mexico uh, in that altitude to yeah. <laughs> try to deter us. But eventually, we will climb that mountain and get over the top. So that's, that's we want to wish you all the best. Thank yeah. you. Uh... Okay. So so again, good luck next weekend. Yeah, next weekend. Um, and we'll be in touch as, as, the, as that tournament goes on. And then obviously we will fine tune things in the lead up to the Commonwealth Games qualification in Mexico. Okay, Jamie? Well, and thank you to you. You're a massive supporter of us and um, we really appreciate it. It's, uh, Not a problem at you all. You are much appreciated. So Not a problem you. at all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. 
You too. We'll speak soon. Okay. All right. Thanks, Earl.